my name is Eric Shreve, and I work at the Arizona Department of Emergency and Military Affairs, also known as AZD. I've been with my organization a little over three years now, and I oversee the Situation Unit, which my position is referred to as the Situation Unit Lead. Situation unit is composed of intelligence that relates to all hazards emergency management. So you can think of data, GIS, anything that has some sort of intelligence or geographical comp component to it, supporting the operation that we do over here at emergency management to support the whole community, which is composed of state, county, local, tribe, private, and all of the above, essentially. So it's a big gamut of organizations that we support as far as our customers. Um, the cool thing about our job is that there's never a dull moment. There's always something going on in the state, um, be it you know localized or something that's at the national level or international level for that matter as the pandemic that you're seeing right now. Um, I would say working in this environment, you definitely see the value that data and kind of creating that common operating picture bring to the table as far as having the ability to show leadership as well as folks down at the governor's office kind of the holistic view of what's really happening is essentially taking that you know tabular report or narrative that is very lengthy in text and doesn't give a lot of geographical component um my job or my duty essentially is to oversee and take that information that you would see on a daily situation report and basically find ways to extract it and convert it to something that gives more of a geographical reference. So if our director needs to go down to the governor's office to essentially brief the governor of what the current situation is, he can reference one of the applications or one of the tools that we create and to help him get a, kind of an exposure of what's really going on. What I really enjoy about my job is that you feel like you make an impact to the public, essentially. You know, you, you know at the end of the day, working in some sort of public safety capacity that one, you're helping the public, you're helping, you know, the person that is, you know, having their worst day ever that either is evacuating or being relocated from their home due to a fire or a flood. You're able to kind of help them get a grasp of what's going on, either, you know, with an evacuation map or with a collection form tool to kind of have an understanding of what their vulnerable needs are or what their um, requirements are essentially out in the field. So, you get a lot of fulfillment knowing at the end of the day you get to help people like that. And the other thing that definitely makes the job fulfilling is that you help first responders. You're helping the boots on the ground, you know, the person that's either putting out the fire or, you know, rescuing someone in a, in a swift water type um, environment. That's one of the kind of key components of emergency management is that you know, obviously it's a public safety capacity, but you're not really boots on the ground. You're more in a support role. You're more the coordination of moving resources and coordinating of sharing information to, again, you know, create that common operating picture and, and increase situational awareness in the state. So there's no surprises, but as well as helping folks out in the community. Um, if I were to give a couple recommendations for future students or future, um, uh, you know, professionals that are working in this field or that want to work in this field, um, you know, think of GIS more than maps. Um, I know when I first started working in GIS, uh, back, I think about eight years ago, um, you know, I really thought of it as, you know, just maps, you know, maps, a Google map, like when you go to a, uh, you know, a Christmas party or you go, you know, meet 
uh, you know, relatives that you haven't seen in a long time and they ask you, oh, what do you do for work? What do you do? And you say, oh, I, I work with maps. I, may, I work with, you know, it's like Google Maps. I would try to avoid using that type of terminology and taking it more out of a, you know, map approach. We're just seeing, you know, information on a, on a piece of paper and take it more of a, you know, I, I support, um, you know, look at the John Hopkins uh, dashboard, like take that example and say, I'm sure you've seen this either on the news or on the internet. And essentially that is what I do. I take data from all these different sources, all these different inputs and essentially find ways to construct and find ways to transform it to show Gen, you know, basically the public, what, you know, what the real situation, what, what is going on. And then additionally, I would say, you know, you kind of, you're able to take that data, that information and create some sort of analytical process to it. So you can analyze trends, you can analyze, you know, where the vulnerable population may be possibly impacted. So I would say definitely take that mindset and you know, adjust the, the narrative to say it's more than just maps. And the other thing that I would recommend to people is you know, step outside your comfort zone. Um, I know you know a lot of people aren't fans of public speaking. They're not fans of going out and you know establishing some rapport with you know a coworker that you don't know or with you know the boss that um, just hired you. But I would really recommend you know, a good way to make a first impression when you're in that new job or new um, profession is understand, you know, what, what, what do the end users do? What, what are, you know, some of the challenges that the non-technical users in your organization do day to day? You know, what are the pain, po pain points of what they do? And understand and sit down with them and, and basically, you know, come up with solutions that, that at the end of the day, that's what we do. We're, you know, technologists that take ideas and you know and basically find ways to streamline and automate it that's what i would say a recommendation would be on my end to you know future people that are going to be jumping in this profession is sit down with the customer and you know go through the details of what their you know point a to point z what their business process looks like when they're going through a workflow and identify ways to you know increase efficiency reduce redundancy and I think at the end of the day, there's a lot of value in, you know, learning and understanding that trait. So, um, you know, to sum it up, I, I know I, this is definitely challenging times across the country, across the world. Um, I know definitely this concept has shifted our culture into, it, it's essentially accelerated our data-driven society, essentially, as well as kind of the, the you know, the, increase of technology to help increase efficiency because you know either funding's reduced or lack of staffing so i really see the evolution of gis coming more to the fold more than ever just based upon the demand and need of you know what the you know the public or what your business is asking for and at the end of the day i think you know there's really a good impact to make on the profession so good luck um Feel free to reach out, send me an email. Um, I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter, you know, all the social media platforms if you come across my profile. Um, feel free to drop me a message anytime. I'm always open for conversation, always willing to give advice where need be, and uh, you know, really want to see people in our profession be successful down the road. So um, with that, uh, nice speaking with y'all, and I'll talk to you later.